David's mighty men were a group of valiant warriors who fought alongside him with exceptional courage and loyalty. Here are some of the main mighty men mentioned in the Bible. Joshua Bashabeth, also known as Adino, he was known for single-handedly slaying 800 enemies. Eliezer, famed for his bravery in a battle against the Philistines, where he fought until his hand clung to his sword in victory. Shama, defended a lentil field against Philistine forces and secured a victory for the Israelites. Abishai, David's nephew and a skilled warrior who played a significant role in battles. Benaiah, known for his daring feats, including killing a lion in a pit and defeating an Egyptian warrior armed only with a staff. These mighty men exemplified courage, devotion, Shalom. Valiant warrior. Shalom. Kalalim la Yahweh. Bahashem Yahweh Shai. Bahashem Rukakadash. All praises be to the Most High, Yahweh, in the name of His Son and our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad in double honor and respect to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. They Coming back at you with another lesson, prophesying demonstrates powerful works. So the brothers that are diligent, that are teaching daily, are demonstrating levels of spiritual power through the Holy Spirit. So these are acts of mighty works. Let's go here to some signs that I notice. Keep seeing these men, these are not normal men, okay? They're the ancient spirits from the days of old. And the spiritual number keeps showing up, 144. You can see it here in the likes and the minutes, 144 in the views. Here it is again, 144. Elder Karatazab, Brother Nahamah, 144, the hour, the views, and the likes. This is Elder Mawatazab out of Los Angeles. His subscribers, 144. This is Elder Mawatazab out of South Carolina, 144, the, the likes. My channel, yeah, you can see it here in the likes and views, 144. Elder, Elder Karatazak, 144. So this lines up with what we read in Revelation 14. Arrows of Indignation, 144. And here it's, look in the minutes that they've been teaching. An hour, 14 minutes, and that four shows up. 144 and six is my channel there. The likes was 144. And then subscribers jumped to 144. GMS Facts Works, 144. This is GMS Arizona. Subscribers, 144. So there's no such thing as an accident. The Lord is directing every single step of every single man. Brother Azan Ha'amav, 144 in the views and likes. That's just, that's just my channel again, subscribers and videos. <laughs> So these are not normal men and are not normal occurrences. Look at the likes. And I believe this was shared by probably Elder Malcolm, if I'm not mistaken. 
144, and there's his channel, Critical Race Historical Facts. Look at the min look at the minutes and likes. And there's Elder Monatazak. And look at the views you do air not knowing the scriptures 144. So I want to go here real quick. This is Brother Mashiat Arazaka out of Las Vegas. Elder Manasha out of DC. It's in the total time. 4044. Four represents mercy, by the way. And this is um, Elder Iwakanan out of the UK. And this is Big Brother Manatazak out of uh, Los Angeles, 144. So these men are back on the earth. Let's go here real quick. Revelation 14. So I've just been observing this number, and sometimes Esau will change the time step after the video finishes with the spiritual number of 144. Let's go to Revelation 14. Revelation 14 and 1. And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Zion, and with him a hundred forty and four thousand, having his father's name written in their foreheads. So this name carries the doctrine. Remember, Yahweh Shai, which is the lamb, is the author and finisher of our faith. Now, Wait a minute, they're standing with him. So did not Yahweh Shai teach? We'll get it. We'll get it. I think it's Matthew 13 and 54. So these men are diligently showing strength and spiritual power through the act of prophesying. Let's read it again. Revelation 14 and 1. And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Zion. And with him a hundred, forty, and four thousand, having his father's name written in their foreheads. And when you go into the NIV, it's and his son's name, or and his father's name. So these men are exalting Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. Let's go to Matthew 13 and 54. Book of Matthew, chapter 13. So these are not regular Joe Blow men walking the streets carrying a six pack of beer with their head turns backward, turned backwards, and smoking their blunt or black and mild. These are the ancient men, the ancient spirits that are back on the earth in these last days. See, let's go to Matthew 13. And 53, and it came to pass that when Yahawashai had finished these parables, he departed thence. And when he was come into his own country, he taught them in their synagogue that they were astonished and said, Whence had this man wisdom and these mighty works? So these are the mighty men of King David standing with the Lamb, Yahweh Shai, teaching in these last days, standing on the Mount Zion. That's the congregation of the Lord's saints, his elect, building of the third temple. See, mighty men, mighty works. So this spiritual power translates into new bodies. Mighty men. Let's prove that. Let's go here. Let's go to Psalms. The Spirit of the Lord is in all things. Psalms 144, verse 1. Blessed be the Lord, my strength, which teacheth my hands to war and my fingers to fight, my goodness and my fortress, my high tower 
and my deliverer, my shield, and he in whom I trust, who subdueth my people under me. So the spirit of the Lord is the end all, be all. It manifests through the air we breathe, everything we touch, everything we speak and do. In music and psalms, in doctrine. So these are mighty works. And the mighty men of the house of David are exemplifying that mighty work through prophesying. Matthew 13, let's go to verse 52. And then said he unto them, Therefore, every scribe which is instructed unto the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is a householder which bringeth forth out of his treasure things new and old. So the ancient spirits are reincarnated back on the scene, teaching both Old and New Testament, prophesying as well. Right back to 54. And when he was come into his own country, he taught them in their synagogue insomuch that they were astonished and said, Whence had this man this wisdom and these mighty works. So the Spirit of the Lord teaches us to do all things, to transcend the natural order of physics and science on the earth, transcends this physical plane, this physical plane. See, let's go back in time. Let's go to... Where do I want to go? Let's go to Judges 15 and 19. The book of Judges, chapter 15, verse 18. And he was sore. This is talking about Samson. <clears throat> Let's go, yeah. Verse um, 18. And he was sore a thirst. And called on the Lord and said, Thou hast given this great deliverance into the hand of thy servant, and now shall I die for thirst and fall into the hand of the uncircumcised? Let's go to verse 19. But God clave a hollow place that was in the jaw, and there came water thereout. And when he had drunk, his spirit came again and revived him. Wherefore, he called the name thereof in Hakor, which is in Lehi unto this day. Let's go here to verse 14. And when he came to Lehi, the Philistines shouted against him. And the spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him and the cords that were upon his arms became as flax that was burnt with fire and his bands loose from off his hands. Spiritual power teaches us all things and strengthens us. So we're operating on a low level in relation to the full-blown spiritual gift that's coming. And he found a jawbone of an ass and put forth his hand and took it and slew a thousand men therewith. So this power is going to be re-invoked. The Lord's men are for, are for signs and are being shown that power through the gift of prophecy, being able to teach and interpret the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. So the men of the Lord are for signs, his elect. Let's go to, let's go to right here. I'm trying to remember where it's at. I think it's in Isaiah 8. Yep, Isaiah 8 and 18. 
Behold, I and the children whom the Lord have given me are for signs and for wonders in Israel from the Lord of hosts, which dwelleth in Mount Zion. See, standing upon Mount Zion. So the Lord's ancient spirits are back reincarnated. Let's go back to Revelation 4, Revelation 14 and 1. And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Zion, and with him a hundred forty and four thousand, having his father's name written in their foreheads, chanting, Barakatha Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai, which encompasses the Old and New Testaments, the full unadulterated doctrine. See, let's go back to Isaiah 8. The book of Isaiah 8 and 18. Behold, I and the children whom the Lord have given me are for signs and for wonders in Israel from the Lord of hosts, which dwelleth in Mount Zion. So we're seeing the signs of these mighty men from the days of old. We're seeing the numbers, indicators. We're seeing their works. Is it not written, you shall know them by their works? This is Elder Gabar, Elder Apostle Gabar. Look at the timestamp of his lesson. We're seeing signs. Elder Malcolm, the minutes and the likes. But anyway, I've already been through all that. Let's go back to here. Let's go to 2 Samuel 17. Well, we don't need to read that. <laughs> Let's go to 1 Peter 4, verse 7. The book of 1 Peter 4. Verse 6, for for this cause was the gospel preached also to them that are dead, that they might be judged according to men in the flesh, but live according to God in the spirit. So this gospel being preached is raising up the ignorant elect to a lively state to be born again or resurrected from a dead state of ignorance and wickedness. So we're, we're being liberated, freed through the teaching of the word. First Peter 4 and 7. But the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer. And above all things, have fervent charity among yourselves for charity shall cover the multitude of sins. So charity is giving. Let's go to this word charity real quick. Charity comes from the Greek. Strong's G26, agape. 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 Affection, goodwill. So these are charitable works by teaching. That's why the scriptures is called the bread of life. <clears throat> Let's go here. Second Peter 1, verse 9. But he that liketh these things. Let's go to verse 8. Second Peter 1 and 8. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord. Yahweh Shai. Mashiach, but he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off and have forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. So this is a process of renewing that inward man daily. Verse 10, wherefore the rather brethren Give diligence to make your calling and election sure. But if ye do these things, ye shall never fail. 
so that just like the mighty men of the house of David were diligent, were chafe men of war, strong tenacity, fervence, which is like fiery. Let's look at that word diligence. Diligence comes from the Greek. Strong's G, 4704, spudazo, spudazo. To make effort, to make effort, endeavor, labor, earnest, hasten to exert oneself. So this is a demonstration of power to be diligent, especially flowing with that energy daily. That's not normal to be demonstrating prophetic works daily, like Yahawashai. So that comforting spirit has been parsed out or apportioned to his men. It's not normal to be able to do that. So it's not to be taken lightly or for granted. Let's read that again. Second Peter 1, verse 10. Wherefore the rather brethren give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if ye do these things, ye shall never fail. Why? Because we can do all things through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. That's why he teacheth us all things. Matter of fact, let's go to John 16 and 13. So it is the spirit that profiteth, that quickeneth us. The spirit of the Lord that came mightily upon Samson. We're going to go to John 16 and 13. Let's go to 12. I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. Howbeit when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. So the spirit of truth is teaching us all things, showing us things to come, giving us the gift and the ability to prophesy in his name. Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. We read that. Let's go here to the book of John 14, verse 10. Believest thou not that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me. He doeth the works. So this is a spiritual gift from on high to get visions, to be able to prophesy, to be able to demonstrate magnificent works, mighty works that were given to the mighty men in the days of old. That same power is being parsed out today. Verse 11, believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. Remember, the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon Samson. Remember King David. His hands were taught to war. So the elect men are going to be changed as the angel of the Lord. New bodies. The spiritual prowess or gift on the inside is going to grow full bloom, full strength, and tapping into 100% usage of our mind and body collectively, John 14 and 13. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, 
that the Father may be glorified in the Son. So this is the gift of power, spiritual power on a vibration of prophesying and interpreting dark parables, dark sayings through the Holy Scriptures. Many people are following the lessons but don't understand it. So the Holy Spirit must be guiding our mind. We'll go ahead and get one more. Let's go to Acts 1. The book of Acts chapter 1 and verse 7. Acts 1 verse 7. Another indication that the mighty men or the ancient spirits are back. Acts 1 and 7. And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Spirit is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. So the earth, uttermost part, is the western hemisphere. The sun rises in the east and sets on the west. This is why America is called a western or Roman culture. So that, that's an indication, a strong indication that the ancient spirits are back, reincarnated. Remember, Yahweh mentioned regeneration, in the regeneration. So these men are the men that he was that he spoke to. Everything is being called back into remembrance. Let's read that again. Acts one and eight. But ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Spirit is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth, America. So these men are back on the scene of the crime in the wickedest kingdom or queendom that has ever existed. Look here in the length of the lesson. 144. It's all over the place. Brother Azan Ha'amlav. Arizona, brothers. Anyway, I've talked enough. Hopefully this lesson has been edifying. Our praises to Yahweh Bahashem. Yahweh Shai. Bahashem. Or Kwankadash. Double honor and respect to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. See you on the next lesson, Lord willing. Kwam Yasharala and the Bad Baba. We got next, Lord willing. We're rocking thumb. Shalom.